Another week and another Christmas film starring a professional wrestler, as today, again at the Channel Point's request of Quaid, we're going to look at Santa's Little Helper, released in 2015. So Santa's Little Helper is an American comedy Christmas film starring Mike the Miz Mazanin, professional wrestler, as well as Aline McCord and other fellow professional wrestlers Soraya and Miz's real-life wife, Maurice. The movie was directed by Gil Junger, who is most known for his director debut, Ten Things I Hate About You. The movie stars Miz as a man named Dax who hates Christmas, but then he gets a chance to love Christmas, which is probably the most original plot I've ever heard to anything ever. There are no box office numbers for this because it never went box office, this was straight to DVD. As far as critic reviews, well, it got 4 to 5 stars on Voodoo from almost a thousand reviews, so that's something. So was The Miz able to love Christmas, and more importantly, was he at very least a better actor than Hulk Hogan? God, I hope so, but we're gonna find out right now as we review Santa's Little Helper, released in 2015. So we begin our movie by meeting Dax, nicknamed The Axe, who is, well, a corporate axeman responsible for shutting down a youth center just a few days before Christmas. Dax is well not liked at his job, or by anybody really, and that's about to get worse as his boss Lane, in a corporate power play, fires him. And after he goes home, his wife leaves him, his company car is repossessed, and he has just a few days before his house is repossessed as well. That night he goes back to the youth center and notices his own name scribbled into a bench, and then he yells at the youth center, promising to bring it down. He's then interrupted by Santa Claus, who tells Dax that he still sees good in him, but Dax is like, yeah, whatever man, fuck you. And turns out that was actually the real Santa Claus, who goes back to the North Pole to work out with his trainer Billy. Billy is an elf that doesn't look like an elf because she has a birth defect that made her ears round instead of pointy, which has caused her to be shunned by other elves. Santa informs Billy that the position of second in command, the Santa's little helper, or the Ho Ho Ho, which yes it's actually called, is becoming open. He also tells her he's had someone in mind for it and he wants her to go down to Earth to test that person. Before she leaves, she's confronted by Eleanor, the daughter of the former Santa's little helper, who believes the job should be hers already. And turns out that candidate that Billy is going to look at is Dex. She tells him about the job opening, although she can't tell him who she works for or what the job actually is. All she can tell them is that she has to test different skills that they're looking for within him, and if he passes, he'll get the job. The first skill is conflict resolution, and he has to go into a biker club and resolve some kind of dispute between bikers. That doesn't go well as he ends up fighting the bikers until he's knocked out by a biker named Melody, who's played by his real-life wife Maurice. The bikers are then about to kill him, I guess, but using North Pole magic, Billy stops them. Billy summons Santa and's like, dude, what are you doing? This guy has none of the qualities we're looking for, but Santa's like, dude, trust me, they're in there, you just gotta bring him out. Dax's next test is entertaining children, so he has to become a monkey mascot for a kid's birthday party. And after a full day of dealing with demon children, he almost screws it up by shoving the birthday boy's face into his cake, but saves it by starting a food fight. He's then confronted by Eleanor, who's come to Earth and found out that he's the candidate, but he kind of just confuses her because he thinks that she wants the monkey outfit, and yeah, he wins this round. He also becomes closer with Billy as he genuinely thinks that she's beautiful, which she's never heard before because everyone thinks she's a freak of the North Pole because of her round ears, and she almost falls for him before she freaks out. His next test is getting along with old people, which he succeeds in by taking his shirt off and starting a rave. It's almost time for his final test, but he sees a man who's just been mugged, and I guess the muggers took a valuable ring off him. He gets the ring back from the muggers and gives it back to the man, and turns out that was his final test, a supreme act of kindness. So he passed, he's got the job. Who's that job for again? Well, for Santa Claus, of course, which he obviously does not believe for a second. But after Billy hits him with some magic and the actual Santa shows up again, he starts to get the picture. Santa then goes all Ghost of Christmas past on him, and we find out why he's like this. Turns out he used to attend the youth center as a child and was taking part in a youth center play, but somebody stole the money for it. He was framed, but turns out it was actually the youth center director that set him up. And then just to be a dick, I guess, Santa shows him that had he not lost his faith in people, he would have been a millionaire astronaut with a nice wife and two kids. He tells Dax though that it's not too late to make something for himself, so Dax gives up his house and heads to the North Pole to accept the job. Right as he's about to be sworn into the job, however, Eleanor comes down with a loophole. Turns out it says in the rules that anyone can object to the appointment of Santa's little helper, which she does. And upon said objection, she can challenge the appointed ho-ho-ho to an obstacle course race, which she's grown up doing. 
Dax actually does quite well considering he's never done it before, but Eleanor also cheats multiple times and she ends up winning the race and the position. Well, that sucks for Dax, but Santa promises to find him a different position, so that's good at least. Dax has other ideas though, as he steals a magic bell and heads back to Earth with it. Using the magic bell, he gets a new car and then goes to the youth center right as they're about to destroy it. His first play is to summon that man who originally framed him for stealing the money who had fled to the Bahamas and gets him arrested for doing just that. It's not enough though, as all the money was due today, and also he can't use magic to help anymore as Santa shows up and takes the bell from him. Well, last resort time, rousing speech. That's right, he gives a rousing speech about Christmas and how we need to help the kids instead of holding them down, and I guess that's enough to stop the destruction of the youth center, so hooray. Well, Dax has saved Christmas, but Eleanor still wants to be appointed, but she won't be. Turns out there's another loophole. The race for Santa's little helper was supposed to be fair, and she cheated multiple times, so she's disqualified. Dax still lost, though, so he doesn't qualify either, but there's one person who does, Billy. And turns out this is who Santa was testing all along. She obviously accepts the position, and in addition to having a new job, she also gets a new boyfriend as her and Dax kiss under the snow to end the film. So I mentioned before that this is a straight-to-DVD film, right? This might be the most straight-to-DVD, straight-to-DVD film ever. Like, this is literally the quintessential straight-to-DVD movie. This is a movie that you could have watched with no context and just immediately said after it finished, oh yeah, there's no way this was in theaters. Which is funny because Santa with Muscles was, albeit for a couple weeks, and this was a lot better than that. How is The Miz as an actor? He's serviceable. And he's at the very least believable. So was Paige, or excuse me, Soraya, as she's now called for that matter. I mean, they're at least serviceable, and they're believable, and they're a hell of a lot better than Hulk Hogan, I'll tell you that. I will repeat something that I said in the last review. I would rather watch this movie three consecutive times than watch Santa with Muscles one more time. An overview of the movie? It's fine. You know, it's super basic. It's just a never Scrooge ripoff, which has been done a million times. There's quite literally not a single thing special about this movie. Unfortunately, it's a very basic straight-to-DVD Christmas plot, but it's fine. It's just fine. So would I recommend this? Um, I guess. I mean, if you need a cheap movie and you got nothing else going on, something to show to kids, I'm sure they'll like it. Yeah, sure, why not? But next week, we'll be doing an actual acclaimed Christmas movie, on Christmas no less, as we're going to look at Arthur Christmas, which should be a lot of fun. But that is going to do it for my review of Santa's Little Helper. Thank you again, Quaid, for using your points on this. Thank all of you for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below, as well as names of all my patrons. Thank you guys for supporting me and all my channels. I appreciate you guys. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of Santa's Little Helper, released in 2015, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.